And welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premiere podcast for the website cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. Here we are. Taking a break in between episodes of Mad About You. <laughs> to, <laughs> to record this podcast. This is episode 186. Who knows? You know. I don't. Because I'm busy trying to fix this God-blessing microphone. It keeps freaking falling over. And yes, I know the correct answer is for me to get... I might be twisting this in the wrong direction. (laughs) This thing might be broken. (laughs) The correct answer is for me to go and buy a, uh, a desk arm. You know what? I'm not going to do that. I think I really did break it. <laughs> oh, I broke it for real. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Uh, well, then. Here we are. Uh, I, I, fi- I did it. I finally, after years of uh, owning this thing, I finally broke it. Should I keep this episode going? <laughs> no, it's really broken. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> I guess this is something for a future chat to fix. Maybe I just hold the microphone the entire time. What else has been going on? Well, I broke my microphone uh, holder. <laughs> so now I guess I have to go buy a, whatchamacallit, a, a desk arm. Uh, what else has been going on? Mad about you, been watching that. Some other stuff. Anyway, let's continue on with the stupid show because I got stuff to do. Oh, hold on. I forgot to uh, press play on the thing. Okay, so unconventional opening aside. Welcome back to uh, episode 186, I think, of the Constitutionals Podcast. It might be even 187. You know, I'll look. I'll look in the meantime. In the meantime. This is a very podcast for website, cpluscomedy.com. Nope, this is 189. <laughs> I'm about three episodes off. I'm back in the 2020. Baby, this first story comes from Natalie Jarvie over at The Hollywood Reporter. Apple Mole's podcast subscription push amid Spotify's land grab. So this is going to be a very podcast uh, business heavy episode. Um, but what is it? <laughs> So what, what so what do we know about Apple's uh world of podcasting? We know that they are the best RSS procurer, holder of um of of podcasts. Uh and why do we know that? Well, reviews are one thing, and they're the oldest one, the oldest uh podcatcher, I guess was what they're called. Oldest uh, one to have to be hosting podcasts. They don't. They don't host the podcast. Like they don't. Like you can't just upload it. You can't upload your podcast to iTunes, um, which I'm sure or Apple Podcasts now, which I'm sure would be a lucrative deal for them if they had if they had server space if they ever wanted to do that. Um, Any hoosers, but I mean that's why they're popular. They're the oldest. They're the most you know the most name recognition. No one's gonna like people. Like a regular person is not going to go, hey, Art 19, you know, <laughs> no one's going to go, uh, hey, uh, uh, you can listen to my podcast on art19.com. It's just not, no one's going to do it. No one's going to no say, hey, go to megaphone.com and you can listen to this. What other what other podcast <laughs> uh, services are there? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. So we have Spotify and Amazon coming in and swooping up and buying these smaller companies. Amazon only bought Wondery, but, you know, they can buy more. Um, and Spotify bought Glint, Gimlet and their Joe Rogan and just a, uh, The Ringer and a slew of others. Uh, and that's and that's where we are right now. So it's possible that Apple might be interested in procuring their own paid podcast service possible we don't know this comes from this is a i I get obviously thr natalie jarvie but this is via the information is a website uh these talks have been ongoing since at least last fall sources tell all the reporter and ultimately could end up 
taking several different forms. Regardless, it's clear that Tim Cook, the Tim Cook led Apple, after spending the last two years watching rival and music streaming Spotify invest hundreds of millions of dollars to align itself with some of the most prolific podcasters and most, I'm really trying to do this, uh, person I was around, is no longer con- content sitting on the sideline. Uh, podcasts are a huge money business now uh, for for certain people, uh, famous people, and it's and companies <laughs> that that pay for them, but no one else. And uh, and it's it's no secret that every company wants to be able to do this stuff. So Apple, they've already gotten into the TV game with Apple TV Plus, and that has proven to be. Um, well, I mean, we don't know the numbers, the the numbers of paid subscribers. We know the number of subscribers because of the free the the free nature of it. The, so far, for its first year uh, and some change, in a year and a half, but we don't know how many people are actually paying for it. So it's um, so we know, but that we know it's lucrative because they do have hits in uh, Servant and The Morning Show and Dickinson, as well as movies that they're able to purchase too. Uh, but prior to that, they did the same thing with Apple music when they had, um, limited at first it was, these releases were, um, and this is just coming to my head, uh, were exclusively on Apple, but there were limited releases. What, what they turned out to be limited, limited was, uh, Dr. Dre's last album, Compton, um, a Drake album from a couple of years ago. I think I want to say 2013, was also uh, only exclusively on app on iTunes, so you had to buy it and then take the MP3s and drop it on whatever other uh, pi- uh, music listening service you listen to. That could uh, fulfill that type of dream, um, and and that wasn't that didn't work out because people people are going to listen to music or they're not going to listen to music. No one's going to like eagerly search out. <laughs> Like they'll they'll get this they'll get the song, it, whether on YouTube for free illegally, or by, by by buying the actual physical disc. But no one wants to be stuck in one place listening to music in one place like that, unless it's a streaming service and unless it offers everything. Uh, so I so I think that's why it's so hard for music now, but for TV, boom, yeah, I'll subscribe to Peacock to watch the Say by the Bell reboot. Uh, it, it works for that. Uh, for podcasts, it, it's a little up in the air because. Um, How, which then turned into Stitcher Premium, uh, th- sold by EW Scripts to St- uh, to Sirius XM, and it's not exactly doing gangbusters. And uh, I mean, I guess the same could go for Spotify too, because yeah, they have Joe Rogan and his fans are going to listen to that crap on uh, wherever. But no one's they tried that push before with uh, Two Dope Queens. I remember it was initially from the from WNYC Studios, I believe. Uh, it was initially going to be so it was initially free, and then it was and then for a, for a spell, uh, that show in particular was released like a couple of weeks ahead of time on Spotify, and then it was available to the masses on other podcasting platforms. Um, but you know, seeing Apple want to do this, this this could work. Um, because Apple Podcast is the number one podcasting platform out there. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, they could do something like Patreon, Ms. Jarvie writes. Um, this is so people can subscribe to their personalities, the favorite personality that they like, so they can subscribe to, you know, just J- J- Joe Rogan. I can only think of Joe Rogan right now. Uh, or Adam Carolla, uh, should they want to only on that and just like pay him. But I don't, I don't know. I, this is, this is all just speculative at the moment. Uh, continuing on with Apple, Apple podcasts, rather, it has a new spotlight feature. This is written by chance Miller over at nine to five Mac. Apple podcast launches new spotlight editorial feature to promote rising creators every month. So there's 850,000 podcasts. I believe that was in 2020. Uh, That was released late 2020. They have this new and it's hard. It's hard for discovery. It's hard for this show to even get discovered because uh, 70 trillion people are doing something. (laughs) There's a new feature 
called Spotlight that is available today on Apple Podcasts. That'll spotlight people who are creators on the rise, I guess. You can see this on the app. And they talk about the, the per- I don't care about the person. I just want to know what the spotlight feature is. Well, you know, let's, let's, nothing better to do but to go on the app itself. You know, you can only delete stuff. If you have, if you were, let's say, young and uh, you liked free things on iTunes and they gave away free pilot episodes of TV shows, a lot of them you didn't even watch. Uh, I would say about 95% of them you didn't even watch. I would say 98% of them you didn't watch. And you uh, you said, you know what? I'm just going to get these because one day what if I do want to watch it? Uh, and cut to about 10, 15 years later. <laughs> you now have like 100 pilots <laughs> that you've never seen. <laughs> Uh, and then one day, maybe this past week, you you go down. You, you have to you have to download iTunes back to your laptop because you deleted it because no one uses iTunes anymore. And you had to chug along on that very sluggish app and right click, uh, delete from library, light <laughs> right click, delete from library on every single show <laughs> that is on that uh, that was on uh, uh, iTunes. Any hoosers, <clears throat> I'm pop, I'm popping open the app. And yes, they have this. It just says a featured show, and uh, she has. And this is this is somebody who seems to be uh, okay. Well, hold on. She's had famous people as guests, so that's not really fair. Uh, but yeah, she doesn't have as many reviews as and right. And reviews are you know an arbitrary way of judging a show's popularity. But I think it's easier this way. Uh, she only has like uh, three hundred reviews, three hundred seventeen reviews, but. Uh, so she doesn't look to be as popular as uh, others. So yeah, there's a new spotlight feature, and I thought that was very interesting. Speaking of podcasts, last one for the first part of this episode, Pocket Casts will go up for sale again three years after acquisition by Public Radio Group, written by Corbin Davenport over at Android Police. Uh, let me just zoom in on this. Okay. Podcast player... Application Pocket Cast, which is what I use, uh, which I don't suggest you download because uh, now it's not now it's free and it's a subscription base versus before it was you pay five dollars for each version of the app, including online, including accessing the web player. You get five dollars for the Android app, five dollars for iOS app, five dollars in order to listen to it on the web. At the time, best fifteen dollars ever spent. <laughs> um, it was acquired by a uh, public radio group in mid twenty eighteen. Right around the time Spotify started expanding into the podcast world, the service has some up and downs, blah, blah. Okay, anyway, um, the thing is, the uh, the public radio group is uh, owned, it was, is joined by things like uh, New York Public Radio and NPR. But as of September 30th, 2020, both of those companies have the largest shares of Pocket Media, which is which owns Pocket Cast. Chicago Public Media owns twenty uh, owns a good percent, and BBC Studios Americas owns a minuscule percent. But Pocket Cast has been operating at a loss for the past couple of years, and uh, last year was no different. NPR expects to no longer be an investor in podcast media by September thirtieth, twenty twenty one. Now, whether that means. Uh, so basically what that means is, uh, excuse me, I just got an email. <laughs> basically what that means is uh, that NPR is not going to, they have their own podcast player and they're looking for ways to put money back into the newsroom because the coronavirus did affect um, their funding, which comes from the public and other companies. Uh, so they have their own podcast player, NPR One, which uh, I downloaded, had for years, had never opened it, but I thought it was the only way to listen to NPR on my uh, on my phone, and uh, technically it was, but now they, everything's on a podcast for, uh, platform for them, so, uh, and also have Sirius XM. Doesn't matter anymore. Doesn't matter. However, it is, uh, I mean, what, what doesn't make sense for them to, like, one of... Like one of their investors, one of NPR investors, one of NPR's donors is Amazon. Would it make sense for Amazon to also donate to Target? <laughs> no, it would not. Um, 
so NPR is, you know, just kind of uh, just looking at the big picture. Um, I don't know if that means that they're going to take this money, put it back in the newsroom or put it into a better app for their uh, for mobile devices um, or they're going to put it into uh, NPR one. Um, but this this is kind of this is a, a, a swift kick to the to the knee for um, for pocket cash because they would. I mean, but now they have the subscription model thing that's been going on for about a year and a half. So I, I don't know if this is, but I mean, but the, but NPR is a huge donor to them. Are operating at a loss, and uh, they weren't corporate before. So hopefully, this will take them back to their roots. All right, listen, we're gonna take a break. I'm gonna figure out this microphone thing. When we come back, hopefully, the microphone will be fixed. And if not, then who cares? and welcome back from break i did not fix the microphone did not uh i tried i tried very dutifully to fix the microphone hey let's get into this uh next story i got information about the cat she is currently sitting over her food bowl as if i will be feeding her within the next 15 minutes. She has to wait 45 minutes to get fed. Keep him on a schedule. Keep him on a schedule, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, my God. Speaking of podcasts, this is a story I admittedly have not read, uh, but I did see the headline for, and I thought it was interesting. This comes from Ashley Carmen over at The Verge. Hello, Ashley. Spotify is paying podcasters tens of thousands of dollars to buoy its own sponsorship tool. I just keep getting emails left and right, baby. And they're all about bills. (laughs) So, Spotify bought Anchor in 2018. Mm, Right. Right, is it true? Spotify bought Anchor a couple of years ago. Anchor is the company that uh, I'm using their app currently right now as a, a soundboard, and that's all I use it for. It is a podcasting platform that makes it easy for anyone with a phone to podcast. All you have to do is download the app, maybe load in some sound effects of your own or get some sound effects from their own private library, and uh, do your little podcast. You put in some sound effects, maybe uh, put in an ad read or two, which you can get from Anchor, and upload your podcast, boom, you got your podcast. But here's the thing, those ad reads, A, available for everybody, which we'll get to in a second, uh, and B, are all, the bill is being footed by Anchor, aka the company that owns it, Spotify. So this takes place uh, in between 2018 and uh, 2020, the story. I'm talking about how some podcasters who they allow for their shows to have ads because that's how you get paid. Uh, and th- some of the ads came from companies like Pocket Cast, which we just talked about, uh, the app, which doesn't pay for ads, and the Black Tux, and also Anchor itself. So... To those companies, Anchor, Pocket Cast, are technically not paying for the ads. They're just being advertised. And Black Tux is the only advertiser. Uh, some, of these ad comp- some of these ads have lasted less than a month and gotten the, this current uh, person, this particular person, only $50 total. Anchor, on the other hand, Quote, has paid him around $2,500 to advertise its own service. So the problem is that they, The Verge talked to nine podcasters, actually, over at The Verge, talked to nine podcasters, said the same story. Anchor sponsorship feature seems to be seriously lacking in sponsors, and they've received few, if any, opportunities beyond Anchor or Spotify itself, which means that they are just doing self-promotion. I was going to say cross-promotion, but... Uh, if anything, this is self-promotion. Um, 
it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like if I uh, said, "Hey, listen to the pod, listen to the Constitutionals wherever you get your podcast." At the end of uh, the Constitutionals, which I do every single week, which I've done for the past 187 episodes, 188 episodes, or not? Who knows? So, anchor, why are you on the counter? I don't understand. There's nothing up there for you. So Anchor uh, Anchor has software. Uh, there's there's multiple versions of um, well, there's only a couple. There's a couple of versions of software for podcast hosts, not like a host like me, but a podcast hosting company uh, that can use right now. That's kind of like it's automatic software. So uh, earlier when I said they can input ads, they can do ad reads and all that stuff uh, for Anchor in particular. All right, so the, so the, let me do the first one because the first one you'll. You'll notice in a second. Um, shows, uh, companies like Stitcher Premium will go with like a company like Megaphone, which is a uh, an, uh, a, a podcast server host, I guess, whatever. <laughs> they provide the RSS feed and all that stuff and, and they host a show, whatever. Uh, and they allow for um, a company like Megaphone or even Art19 maybe uh, and all the other ones too. They probably do this too, are doing this technology. So the original way <laughs> of doing an ad read was you find a sponsor, or a sponsor finds you. You find a sponsor, or a sponsor finds you. Uh, Manscaped. They come to they come to you. They say, "Hey, read this ad on your show. We'll pay you this much money, which is apparently not that much." Uh, after you know, the big wigs get their hand on it, uh, and then you read the ad on your show. Uh, people go and buy Manscaped because of your show. Your listeners go and buy, and they type in uh, your code word and then boom you get some kickback they get most of the kickback so the new the newest way of doing that is uh they those companies manscapes will go out to a separate you know marketing company or they'll use their own marketing uh, arm they'll make the commercial uh 15 30 seconds 45 however long you're paying for and then they will send it to you know the to to the show and then uh automatically on to the RSS feed or to the to megaphone or R19 or whatever, and it'll upload that ad to that episode of that show. And then they can do that. And then if they stop paying for that sponsorship, then another company can come in and say, hey, I want to buy 12 ad placements on um, uh, uh, This American Life or Comedy Bang Bang. And then they can start in those same spots where it's not the show, it's just the ad spots. They can replace those Manscaped ads with ads for uh, brother printers. So that's a new technology. So Anchor is kind of like a mix between those. <laughs> you can input uh, your you read you read your own ads, uh, but they'll they'll reach out to sponsors for you. Uh, so they'll reach out to Black Tux and say, hey, we're going to offer you Black Tux. You can opt in for a Black Tux ad or you can opt out and you can do the ad yourself. Whew. All right. So uh, so now everybody who's on Anchor, who uses Anchor, 100,000 people, apparently, I think is what I read in this article, use Anchor to make podcasts uh, and they are able to get, they are able to monetize their podcasts and you get paid based on uh, you or and you add, and you get ad offers based on how many thousand to thousands of listeners you get. So every thousand you bring, you get a certain amount of dollars, uh, and truly just dollars. <laughs> Keep in mind, the only people making money are the super famous people uh, who like just decided to do a podcast. Your Conans, your uh, office ladies. Those are the people getting paid a lot of money to do podcasts versus the other ones that don't. Unless they're on Patreon, then they get, you know, however much their fans want to put in. Uh, but now it, it looks like Spotify has been paying this money <laughs> to its own self, to it to its people, basically just to keep them on. Uh, Anchor seems to be bankrolling its own sponsorship. Uh, and uh, and that's how I mean, and that's how you know Spotify's. That's part of the part and reason why uh, it took for so long for Spotify to to reach uh, the green when it, when it came to their money woes. Um, and they didn't. They need to figure this out. 
and and for a lot of these uh, shows, they lose sponsorships uh, at the end of the you know you know, sponsorships only last for like a couple of months or so, um, and they lose sponsorships and they don't hear anything back. So it's kind of like Spotify's giving you a taste of the dragon. You like it so much. All right. This is a new thing I found out. This comes from Vox and the New York Times. Ezra Klein is moving to the New York Times. Apparently, he announced this in December. Did not know that. Did not know that. Uh, And that includes his podcast is moving from Vox to the New York Times. Uh, his, his podcast is called The Ezra Klein Show. Ezra Klein, if you don't know, he's a political analyst, a uh, very smart, um, nerdish guy. <laughs> and uh, his show is he just sits down with you know smart people to talk about uh, what's going on in the world. Um, and uh, I, I, I like him. Uh, and his move from Vox uh, makes sense. <laughs> Vox constantly asking me for money when I read on their website. <laughs> but so is the New York Times, so it's all fine. It premieres on January 26th. January 26th. <laughs> January 26th. And uh, every Friday and Tuesday, he's going to talk to... Uh, he's going to have a conversation about something that matters. Okay, I'm not going to do a freaking thing for this. You can go ahead and listen to the uh, preamble for the show, but the Ezra Klein show is no more on Vox. Uh, and now that show is becoming... I think it's called Vox Opinions now. I think they've already made the transition um, but I did leave a uh, a rundown of uh, Ezra Klein. I call it the Ezra Klein Show Starter Pack. Um, and uh, I can only assume that the RSS feeds for that show will be moving over to a different host. So who knows? But he's a smart guy, and uh, I, uh, I wish him the best over at uh, New York Times. You're not getting fed, man. Not for 25 minutes. Why are you looking dejected? What are you doing? I'm talking to the cat. <laughs> I'm sure that's great for the video watcher. <laughs> All right, listen. I got to fix this uh, podcast uh, micro- microphone arm. Listen, uh, like, if you like what you heard here, and I don't know why you did, head on over to the website, cpluscomedy.com, where you can see me talk to your favorite comedians, Chris Gathard, Maria Bamford, Craig Ferguson, Jermaine Fowler, Ron Funches, Jimmy Pardo, just this, just like a handful of people I've spoken to. You can also head to the website, youtube.com slash cpluscomedy to the URL. <laughs> and uh, see a version of the show in video form. I don't know why you would do that. See me sitting in a Target sweatshirt with uh, Target shorts and uh, probably Target socks. <laughs> and uh, definitely Target underwear. Boxer briefs. I like to keep everything nice and tight. <laughs> also on YouTube.com slash C plus comedy, you can find uh, our premiere show, News Time which is like the Daily Show, except less funny. I take one story, and I talk about it. This week's episode is about the inauguration. And I put it out on Inauguration Day. It's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a good episode. Not like last week's episode, which was phenomenal, but this week's episode, pretty good. I have to figure out next week's episode. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Seaplus Comedy. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Chat Black White. Like us on Facebook, rate, review, subscribe to this podcast literally wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, only the big platforms. I don't, I don't want to put it on like Radio Public or whatever it's called or uh, <laughs> the other ones. It's mostly Apple and Stitcher and Spotify and Google. And uh, yeah. All right. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends. I'm done. Bye. Oh, nope. It didn't start. Okay, here we go. Bye.